Happy work, Shalom. This is Apostle Rejoice coming to you live in my beautiful studio where the Spirit of God dwells in this beautiful region. We celebrate the Lord today for another day that he has made, and we're going to continue on to rejoice and be glad in it. Let the redeemer of the Lord say so from the high times to the valley low. For the Lord God, he is good, and his mercy endures forever. Forever. Can you say forever? Forever. And so we give God praise on today for this wonderful time that we do not take for granted at all. But we know God is on the throne and there's nothing the devil can do about it. He cannot do a coup on him. He tried and that's why he's called the devil and he's called Satan and he is no longer Lucifer. Uh, and so because of that, we want to celebrate the Lord today. But before we do anything else, this is Wuwak International Ministries here at beautiful Stone Mountain, Georgia. Amen. And we want to give God praise. If you are ever in the Stone Mountain area, we invite you to come on, get Send me a message so we can have fellowship together one-on-one, -on -one, hand on hand, touch by touch. Not just in the spirit, we're touching and agreeing, but we're doing the same thing as well in the physical realm as well. And so before we do anything else, let's go to God in prayer. Lord, we want to thank you today. We want to bless you. We want to honor you for being who you are for us. For if it had not been for you who was on our side, we would not know where we would be. But we want to thank you, oh God, today for blessing us with your grace and your mercy, with your presence and with the Holy Spirit that dwells in us. We thank you, Holy Spirit, right now for coming in and supping with us right now. We praise you. We honor you for the blood of Jesus Christ that streamed down on Calvary's cross. In, this, in that same blood, we ask for forgiveness of every sin. We ask you, Holy Spirit, right now that you shall, oh God, and take preeminence in this service. We we bless you. We honor you for being who you are for us. We glorify your name. We celebrate your name. We bless your name. Hallowed be thy name in all of the earth. And so we, Lord God, we we, we feel too uh, joyful to come before our daddy, our our God, our savior, our redeemer. We, Lord God, come with a with a heart of gladness and a heart with full of honor. That because if it, you did not, Lord God, call us from from out of darkness into the marvelous, your marvelous light. We will not know where we'll be, but we thank you, Holy Ghost. We honor you, Holy Spirit, right now that you, oh God, is definitely changing our course and, and making, Lord God, look, look like the book that you've written of, on us, oh God, from the foundation of the world. So, God, we thank you, and God, we praise you. We honor you for being who you are for us. We ask you to breathe on us right now in the name of Jesus Christ. For we realize, oh God, it is you and it's not about us. We ask you, Holy Spirit, that you shall, oh God, oh God, help us to, oh God, to be where you want us to be. And we give you praise for ordering our steps, for our steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and delighted in your way. And so, God, we ask all these many more blessings in your name that we pray. Jesus is your name forever and ever. Amen. And amen. amen. Hallelujah. Give God praise on this day because we know it is all about Jesus. It's all about you, oh Lord. And we want to celebrate what you are doing in, in the lives of your people, oh God, on today. And so we just want to sing a song real quick. <laughs> And shortly after that, we're going to let the Holy Spirit have his way. He's already having his way right now. And so we just want to give him glory and honor that's due his name. A song dropped in my spirit. And it just says, oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him, Christ, our Lord, for you alone is worthy for you alone is worthy for you alone is worthy Christ alone 
in you there is no failure in you there is no failure in you there is no failure I cannot live without you. I cannot live without you. I cannot live without you. Worshipping the Lord of Lords, the God of gods. He is our sustainer. He is our redeemer. <laughs> when we start worshiping, I, I, I respect praise in his, in his place. But when it comes down to worshiping God, it's a whole different world, saints. 
Jesus told the women at the well. He says, God is a spirit. And those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. That is letting me understand that you cannot worship God unless you have the Holy Spirit because he is the spirit of truth. I'm not preaching yet. I'm not preaching yet. But I want someone to know today that if you just start worshiping him, problems will leave you. Depression will go. Worry will have to get out your way. Anything and everything that is bothering your mind, start worshiping him and you will see for yourself what God has for you in his presence. <laughs> because in his presence, there's fullness of joy and at his right hand, <laughs> pleasures forevermore. We want to thank God for everyone who's coming on board. I know it's a busy schedule on a Sunday afternoon at four o'clock, but this is what God mandated me for me. And so I, I have to obey him when nobody else will do so. And we celebrate every pastor, every past, every pastor, every pastor. We celebrate you. We celebrate every uh, uh, apostle, uh, my spiritual mom, Apostle G. Marie Carroll, Dr. Amen. <laughs> Dr. G. Marie Carroll. Amen. Uh, we want to celebrate also uh, uh, my other spiritual daughter, uh, Apostle Dr. Uh, Maureen Maloney. Amen. Because we know that there is power in the connection. Amen. Um, and so we want to celebrate every prophet in the house. Uh, prophet, uh, 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 Apostle Prophet. I'm going to call it both things. Uh, 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 Scott. Yeah. <laughs> we celebrate you on today. We love you with a God, God a love. We want to give God praise for every evangelist that is coming on board to, 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 to make your tools sharpen. Amen. Because iron sharpens iron in the name of Jesus Christ. We celebrate every teacher in the house. Amen. When my spiritual mom first heard my voice, the first thing she picked up was the teacher. And God knows I love to teach. Yeah. <laughs> and so we celebrate what the Lord is doing. In the lives of God's people, we thank God for every woman, uh, um, first lady, uh, minister of music. We salute you. We give God praise for you right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, we give God praise. Amen. We do not stop because we just sung the song. I'll praise your name forever. I'll praise your name forever i praise your name forever christ my lord so we promise god this we just made an oath in a song <laughs> That we will bless him at all times and our praises will continually be on our, on our mouths. Why? Even when tears running down our faces, we got to praise him. Even when we don't know where what's going to happen the next day with our children, our husband, our wives, uh, our ministry, our health. We're going to continue to praise him because that is what he designed for us to do. And that is to be uh, earth. It's nothing else but the extension of heaven. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Now, let me stop preaching right now. And so we're going to continue on to bless God today for another opportunity that we do not take for granted at all. So we want to celebrate her. Thank God for uh, Apostle Tammy. Amen. Uh, that's coming on board right now. We give God praise for you, woman of God, and keep on keeping on in the name of Jesus Christ. And so with that, we're going to sing another song real quick, and then we're going to go straight into uh, the message of the Lord, say the same. Um, uh, 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 and I know that a lot of people, it's an old song, but this the, sometimes the old songs basically do, do the work uh, it does for me. And so we're going to give him praise in the name of Jesus Christ. My Jesus, my Savior, Lord, there is none like you. All of my days, I want to praise the wonders of your mighty love. My comfort, my shelter, tower of refuge and strength, let every breath. All that I am, 
never cease to worship you. Shout to the Lord of the earth, let him sing. Power and majesty, praise to our King. Mountains bow down and the seas will roar at the sound of your name. I sing for joy at the works of your hand. Forever I love you, forever I stand. And nothing compares to the promise I have in you. Shout to the Lord, all the earth, let him sing. Yeah. Power and majesty, praise to our King. Mountains bow down and the seas will roar. At the sound of your name, I sing for joy at the works of your hand. Forever I love you, forever I stand. Nothing compares to the promise I have. Nothing compares to the promise I have. Nothing compares to the promise I have in you. I don't know if you have some promises that God has to fulfill, but you keep singing that song and you watch your spirit man will be connected to the Lord. And in that, God himself will get glory because you gain hope in certain situations, gain hope in certain songs, gain hope in certain um uh, messages. Amen. And we celebrate you all today. We thank God for my spiritual son, Matthew Wake from Liberia, Africa. He's watching me all the way from Africa, good people. Amen. And so we give God praise for him on today. Uh, and of course, uh, we have great work doing uh, being done over there. Uh, two churches in the same uh, uh, county, same country. We give God praise for you all as well. In the name of Jesus Christ, we want to introduce to you all now to some a legacy of prayer. I want to let you know that uh, my spiritual mom called this out in the spirit world. Trust me. Uh, and so with that, I would love for you all to hear, listen to this and read this book. Uh, if you are a pastor's child and, and you, you know God has called you, but your denomination don't believe in a woman pastor. I think you need to read this book. I really believe that um, a legacy of prayer would bless your soul. Um, if you are a first lady, if you were a first lady, um, if you've been divorced, uh, been sheltered, um, it's all in the book. And so I want you just to put it out there for you all to understand what is going on. And if you have your Bibles with me, let us go to the book, the shortest uh, book in the gospel, uh, Mark. Amen. And speaking of that, we are definitely doing um, uh, the study of Mark as well uh, on my YouTube channel. If you do have not subscribed, please subscribe. It's the same, my same name, you better rejoice. And of course, please subscribe and share. Amen. Please share. Um, after you subscribe, share to, with somebody else because somebody may need to hear what does that mean? And how did that happen? Because the Bible's not confusing unless you are not being taught. Amen. And so I just want to bring that out there as well. So Mark chapter nine, we are in book, chap, book, um, book of Mark chapter nine, and we're going to read um, starting in verse 14. <clears throat> and it says, and when he came to the disciples, he saw a great multitude around them. And the scribes disputing with them. We must understand that the uh, the the context of the text itself. What is he talking about? From the beginning of uh, the first verse in chapter nine, we are seeing that Jesus now has uh, decided to 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 um, expose or reveal um, his his glory, a little glimpse of his glory uh, uh, in uh, the beginning of this chapter. And after when everything was said and done, what happened? He saw a uh, 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 
Peter was so astonished to what he has saw. He's never saw glory like that. And that's what will, what will happen when God, when Jesus calls us, handpicks us, uh, those who are leaders, handpicks us into another realm of his glory so we can give what we have. We can never give what we don't have, saints. Let me say that again. We're going to give what we have. <clears throat> but if we never, <clears throat> excuse me, experience the glory in a different dimension, a different light, we can't give anything. So therefore, Jesus had to bring them to another level. Out of the 12, only three, Matthew, I'm sorry, uh, uh, Peter, James, and John, those three were the one who were handpicked, selected to be leaders of the church. And we see that, of course, in the book of Acts. And so Jesus was training. This is why training is so important. Training, he was training them to know exactly <clears throat> what to do. And here he is, um, after everything was said and done, he, they're now coming down from the mountain because after the mountaintop, because what does mountain represent? Mountains represents, uh, one thing and one thing only. And that is of course, glory, victory, <clears throat> as well as prayer. That's what the mountain is. But after the, after the mountain, we always got to come back down. <laughs> we got to come back down, saints. We got to come back down. And so with that, Excuse me. Um, as they were come, as the three plus Jesus was co were coming down, they saw the nine disputed, the nine disciples disputing <clears throat> with um, uh, 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 with the uh, the scribes. Now we must understand that the scribes um, were they started off well. The first scribe in the Bible was Ezra. After the seventy year uh, captivity of Babylon, he said, "Let's go back to Jerusalem. We're tired." We need, to, we need to reform ourselves. Somebody's being reformed uh, in their ministry. Somebody's being reformed. Uh, uh, I kept hearing, hearing the word yesterday, um, uh, the word reset. God is resetting somebody. And I don't know who you are, but rest assured, it's going to be a good reset because God is the one who hit the reset button. And so he, they had to reset uh, their, uh, uh, their uh, organization. And so... Here they are now, unfortunately, now the scribes are a whole different matter because now they, they want to criticize Jesus Christ with everything. So they're disputing with uh, the nine disciples. And now here is Jesus and Peter, James, and John. They're coming down from the mountain. Verse 15 says this. Immediately when they saw Jesus and all the people were greatly amazed. Why were they amazed? Because obviously the glory was still shining on Jesus Christ. And they were oh, the glory was even shining on on um on uh, uh Peter James and John because why would they why what uh, why else would they be amazed why else would they be astonished to see Jesus in all of his glory with the three the three that, that he brought up with them and the, and running to Jesus greeted Jesus hmm. verse 16 says and he asked the scribes what what are you discussing with them let me tell you all something saints of God I don't know if y'all ever been in a battle where you got tired of arguing, tired of, of replying, tired of uh, uh, rebuking. When Jesus comes on the scene, <laughs> he's going to say, why are you doing this to her? Why are you doing this to him? Why are you doing this to them, my people? Why are you doing this? What are you disputing for? Why are you arguing for? What is the sense of you arguing? Because I'm going to be, I'm going to let my perfect will be done. <laughs> and so he, he says, what are you discussing with them? Who, who are you to tell them anything? And then here comes verse 17. He says, then one of the one of the crowd answered and said, teacher, I brought you my son who has a mute spirit. So obviously, this is just my little crazy thinking, but obviously it was this man that they probably were, was the, uh, the topic of discussion. And so here comes, here he is now saying, Jesus, I brought I, I'm, I brought you the, my son. He has an issue. I brought you my problem. I have an issue. I brought you my ministry. We have a problem. <laughs> I brought you my health. Uh, my health has a problem. I don't know who, what, or, 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 or whatever is going on. I brought you uh, the word curse because uh, it, it, it's giving me problems. <laughs> uh, I, I, I'm bringing you uh, a, a, my generation, this generational curse that is giving me a problem when was the last time you told god exactly what was giving you a problem 
<laughs> and God wants you to cast your care. Peter wanted to talk to us a little bit. Peter wanted to let us know uh, for us to, and he wants to encourage us to say, cast your cares upon me for I care for you. Cast it on me. I, I got this. Just wants somebody to know that he's got this situation. So verse 18 says, and when, whenever it sees him, the young boy, it throws him down. That's number one. It sees him for one. And then th that spirit throws him on the floor. And he foams at the mouth. It's the same person that can't even talk. It said mute spirit. So what does mute do? Mute just. Mm. <laughs> but it foams at the mouth. It gnashes the teeth. And it becomes rigid. Five major things this particular spirit does. So that let's let us understand um, what it means uh, when we when we when when um, we are introduced to a, a demon, if they're never by themselves. Let me say that again. When a demon has been uh, now exposed in a person, don't just look at just one particular thing because a demon is never by themselves. Uh, demons always have different entourage with them because we're seeing here. Every if you ever look at Jesus' ministry for real. <coughs> Excuse me. You will see that there is always more than one. And so Jesus is, I mean, this man is telling Jesus about, about the situation at hand. And, and so I spoke to your disciples that they could cast it out, but they couldn't. Wow. What do we do when we are ordained or are, 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 are trained to, to do a task? And at the end of it all, unfortunately, we did not do a good job. <clears throat> we're carrying a title, but we're not exercising the title. We are in an office, but we don't know nothing about the office. I'm helping somebody. I think the Holy Ghost is helping somebody. Holy Ghost, I think we're helping. Yeah, I think we're helping somebody. What do you do when, when you got all the information on, 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 on a notebook paper? You got all the information in a notebook paper and still... Can't get it right. <laughs> Can't get it right. Can't get it right. Let's see what happens. Verse 19. And he answered him and said, Oh, fearless, faithless generation. How long shall I be with you? And how long shall I bear with you? Bring him to me. You can hear the frustration in Jesus' voice, Jesus' tone, the, 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 the language of the text is letting us understand clearly that, that Jesus is now frustrated. You mean I've been I've been teaching you? I've been trying, I gave you the power. <laughs> so what's the problem? I, I gave you the tools. I told you that the devil is afraid of you. You should not be afraid of it or them. I gave it to you already. Why are you not exercising it correctly? I'm talking to the pastors. I'm talking to the runaway, uh, 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 the runaway pastor, the runaway evangelist, the runaway apostles, the runaway uh, 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 teachers. I gave you. The Holy Spirit says, "I'm. I gave it to you already. What you What you doing? How dare you not exercise it correctly? I gave you the tools. I gave you the word." There's only three things that the devil is afraid of. <laughs> and let me share with you those three. It's the, the name of Jesus Christ, the blood of Jesus Christ, and the word of God. Those are the three things <laughs> that the enemy do not want us to know. And how effective those three things are. Those three things. The word of God. The blood of Jesus Christ. And the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So Jesus gave them the tool. And he's, he's saying, he said, oh, faithless, faithless. You have no faith. Oh, faithless generation. How long shall I be with you? How long have I to keep on feeding you a teaspoon? You should, be, you should be out of the, the bottle, as Paul told the, the, the Corinthians. You, we should be out of, I don't care how long you've been in ministry, but if, if you mean to tell me you've been in church for 20 years and you don't know how to cast out a, a, a headache, something's wrong, saints. Something's wrong. <laughs> you mean to tell me you don't know what to do when, it's when it comes down to uh, 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 deliverance and healing? 
So we call forth right now the deliverance, the spirit of deliverance and the spirit of healing to rest upon every person that is hearing me right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Prophecy is good, but prophecy comes with power. That means that we need to magnify the power that's in us in Jesus name. And so I awaken right now that that, that spirit has been laying dormant because Jesus wants us to grow higher in the spirit realm. He doesn't he doesn't have to be with us every time in the sense of uh, uh go do this. No, you should, we should already have some 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 uh, in, instructions in us, uh, uh, some fire in us uh, to know when to operate. He's saying here, how long shall I be with you and how long shall I bear with you? And Jesus says, bring the man, bring the young man to me. Hmm. So when they brought the young man to Jesus, verse 20 says, then they brought him to to Jesus. And when he, the young boy, saw Jesus immediately, that's that's one of the uh, one of those uh, uh that's one of uh, uh Mark's favorite uh uh, uh, uh ter- talk. Immediately the spirit convulsed him and he fell on the ground and wallowed foaming at the mouth. You know why that spirit did that? It's because that spirit saw, mm, that spirit saw exactly who the the power. He saw power. He saw he. So therefore, he was going to do one more, one more discouragement, one more conversion. He was going to do. He, he was going to manifest one more time to to see if Jesus was going to. Uh, back down. Jesus don't, don't back down. <laughs> Jesus don't back down at all, saints, and neither should we. So, so obvious. So sometimes the enemy, when you when you're in the brink of a deliverance, the enemy is going to come and try to do something one more time to bring discouragement to to make you throw away the towel for you to to just forget about ministry forget about healing forget about praying forget about reading the word forget about talking to, that's what he does that's his job and he's doing well at it he does well there's a lot of people who backslide for a little bit when they're in the brink of a deliverance and i pray for the good lord that he you and i will not do that that's a distraction for us not to look to Jesus Christ. So here he is doing what he always does. And so verse 21 says, and so Jesus asked his father, how long has he been, has, has, has this has been happened to him? And he said, the father says from childhood. So from childhood, this young man been suffering with what we call epileptics today. I don't know what's your epileptic, but God wants to heal you right now. Not just to, not, not today, but right now, right now. And we command every epileptic spirit that, uh, uh, that's, that's tied to your bloodline. The Lord God rebuke that spirit. I cut, cut it off right now. I cut the umbilical cord right now because epileptic comes in different ways. Poverty. If you keep saying that you're poor, you're going to stay poor. If you say that you, if you continue on saying that you're sick, you're gonna stay sick. You gotta shift the things around. The word of God says that the poor say that they are what <laughs> blessed. <laughs> and so, and so we, we, he, he's making clear when the spirit started. So therefore, now Jesus understood that not that he did not know before, but Jesus wants Jesus now saw that. Uh, the the the, uh, the father knew when the conception of that spirit entered into that young man. As a child, we don't know how old it was. We don't know. All we do know is this been dealing with with him for as a child. So verse twenty two says, and often he he throws down, throw him down into the fire and into the water to destroy him. Saints of God, let me tell you something. When the enemy sees that you, who you are about to be. He's going to do everything in his power to try to destroy you. He's going to make you go through hell. <laughs> and he's going to make you even try. He's going to even try to make uh, sorrow drown you. But the Lord God rebuked fire and water that comes from the enemy's camp. 
And so he's saying, since he was a child, this, this spirit was trying to kill him. Because the enemy saw that this young man was going to be mm -hmm, uh, a, a great testimony of God's power in, your, in his life. And the enemy does not want people to gain glory from uh, um, deliverance. I'm helping somebody because the Holy Spirit wants you to understand exactly what's going on here. He wants you to understand that if you're going through something that's so strong and so tight, that means that the, uh, 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 the, the, the devil does not want God to get glory out of, out of your life. Whatever you're going through, whatever making you cry, whatever is making you unable to sleep, whatever it may be, God said, he's going to get glory. You're not going to die <laughs> no matter what fire. From the enemy comes your way, you're not gonna you're not gonna drown, okay? No matter what wave or wind that comes your way, you're not gonna die because God already ordained for Him to get glory out of your life through this situation that you've been going through since a child. Mm -hmm. Verse twenty three says, Jesus said to him, "If you can believe, all things are possible to him." Who believe Jesus? Jesus wants to make sure that to let somebody know if you can believe <laughs> everything, not some, all things. He he making it clear, all things are possible to those who believes. Mm -hmm. Verse twenty four says immediately the father of the child cried out and said with tears, "Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief." I believe that you can. I believe that you already have done it. I believe, but there, there, there's certain areas, there's certain pockets in my life that I still have issues to think that the, the river of life blinds me for me to see your glory. I believe, but I'm praying for you to help my unbelief. Mm. Help my unbelief. Help me to understand. What needs to be done? Because God wants someone to know today that he's about to do something great. And all we got to ask God is help. Help. Help my unbelief. Because there's areas, there's great areas in my life, in my, in my belief system that's clouding my judgment towards you, God. If you ever looked at God in a bad light, have you ever thought about God in the, in, the wrong, in the wrong way? That's unbelief. And so we command right now, Holy Spirit, to erase and dismiss every unbelief out of our lives right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we thank you for moving on the behalf of, of you in Jesus' name. Verse 25 says, and when Jesus saw that the people came running together, hmm, he rebuked the unclean spirit, saying, deaf and dumb. But the beginning, it says a mute spirit. So this is what I'm saying. So we're seeing here that deaf and dumb work hand in hand. Deaf and dumb spirit. It didn't say spirits. It says spirits. So therefore, it's, one, it's two of the same. <laughs> deaf and dumb spirit. I command you to come out of him and enter him no more. Mm. So Jesus now is telling the demon, I don't care where you go, but you can't come back in this house here. I don't care what's going on. You guys said that to in your house. Go to your house right now. And, and if you are in your house, let's say, I command every deaf and dumb spirit to come out and do not come back in this house again. Because this is the only time you will see that Jesus is telling uh, is telling uh, the demons, don't come back to this house. Oftentimes, Jesus tells the people, sin, uh, uh, go your way and sin no more. But you hardly see Jesus tell the demon, don't ever come back to that house. In other words, this, this body again. Hmm. So we're seeing here that Jesus wants us to know how to exercise demonology correctly. We don't patty cake. We don't counsel demons. We cast them out. Mm -hmm. Verse 26. And the spirit cried out, convulsed him greatly, 
and came out of him. He didn't have no choice. So therefore, there are some demons that are going to come out with a very strong uh, power. But we must understand the concept of what God would want us to know. And that is, they're going to have to come out because we command them in the name of Jesus Christ. Come out of the God's people in the name of Jesus Christ. And he, and he became as one dead so that many said he is dead. Trust me. When an enemy been living in, 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 in a person's life for since childhood, you feel exhausted when that demon comes out. You feel weak, like they say, it became one dead. Verse 27, says, and Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up and he arose. When Jesus extended his hand, what is he doing? He's picking you up. And when he picks you up, there's nothing like Jesus Christ picking you up. Because when he picks you up, no demon, no hell, nothing can bring you back down. And so we're seeing how the Lord himself has done great things. Verse 28 says this. And when Jesus had come into the house, his disciples asked him privately, why couldn't we cast it out? What, 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 Jesus, I, I said the same thing, Jesus. I, I said, come out, and then they, come out, and it didn't come out. <laughs> this is what Jesus said. This is the last, this is what one that I love the, the most. Verse 29 says, and, and so he said to them, this kind, come out by nothing but prayer and fasting. Saints of God, I know that there's, uh, the, the, uh, the religious sect will tell you that the person that has the demon have to be pray, have to fast and pray. I beg to differ. And I rebuke that false doctrine. Remember, if you ever know, study Jesus' life, you will always see that he always prayed between the third and the fourth watch. There are four watches in the night. Four. The first watch is 6 a.m. I'm sorry, 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. The second watch is 9 p.m. to midnight. The third watch is midnight to 3 p.m. The fourth watch is 3 p.m. to 6, I'm sorry, 3 a.m. to 6 a.m. So we will always often see that Jesus will pray on the third or the fourth watch. The third or the fourth watch. So while he's praying for three hours, <laughs> the disciples are sleeping. <laughs> so this is why he said, the last verse in verse 28, it says, this kind can only, can come out by nothing but prayer and fasting. In other words, uh, 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 it's not the recipient's job to pray and fast. It's the deliverer's job to pray and fast. <laughs> I'm helping somebody, Jesus. So, so when we think that that Jesus uh, um, was talking about the, the recipient, the person that has the demon that has to fast, no, demons don't fast. What? No, we got it backwards, saints. It's the, the deliverer. It's the person that, it, that the Lord used to deliver people, to cast out demons. That person, the pastors, the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, uh, uh, the intercessors. Those are the ones that need to pray and fast. So when it's time to cast out demons, we can do that without a problem. So why we cannot cast out demons? It's because we're not fasting and praying. <laughs> hey, the Lord have mercy. It's because we're not asking God for power. It's not because it's, it's because that we are not seeking God's face. It's because we're not reading his word. That's why we don't have any power. We have a lot of praise. Yeah. But we don't have a lot of power. But again, like I said, there's only three elements that the enemy is. Why do you, you think, pastors, why do you think that people always have an excuse to not come to Bible study? 
because the devil knows if they understand the word of God, they're going to gain power. <laughs> because it's in the Bible study that you and I will understand the word of God. You and I will understand the power that's in the blood. You and I will understand of the power that's in his name. So why does the devil do not want people to come to Bible study? Why does the, why does the devil bother people for not going to a prayer service? Because he knows <laughs> if we understand there's power in prayer, power in studying, power in knowing, we're forced to be reckoned with. So Jesus wants us to understand today that any kind of demon, any level, because we have to understand there's different ranks, Amen. There's different ranks in, in the demonic world, just as there's different ranks in the spiritual world, in, 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 in God's world. And so the, 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 the different ranks, whatever ranks um, uh, uh, we, we encounter, it should not shake us because we've done what Jesus has said. We fast and prayed. We studied the word to show ourselves approval unto God. And we understand the power, the, the magnitude of his name. The magnitude of his blood, the magnitude of his word. So if we do not remember when Jesus in the book of Luke, remember when Jesus a uh, a uh, 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 a crowd was surrounding him, and this woman came out of nowhere. And she said, "She said, blessed it be the man. Uh, the, I'm sorry, blessed be uh, uh, the the uh, 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 the breast that nursed you, and blessed be the woman that carried you." And Jesus says, "Even better." Blessed is he who, who hears the word and keep it. <laughs> keep the word. Because it's there, that's where the power is. Why we can't cast out demons today? Because we're so superficial. Let me make it clear. Let me just be honest. We're so superficial to the place where we are not uh, bringing God glory. In this dimension, don't, please don't tell me there's no such thing as demons. Please don't tell me that. I, I, don't, I don't even want to hear that. <laughs> and, and so when we do not understand the dynamics of what God wants us to understand, this is when now we become uh, powerless and, as he said, faithless in the kingdom of God. And God is rebuking some people to understand the concept. It's not just praise. You're praising him for what he has done. Nothing else beyond that. But when you and I start praising him with understanding in all of your getting, get understanding? That's what Proverbs say. That's what Solomon says. So we must know if we, if we are going to be used in this magnitude, we must fast and pray. <laughs> we must study the word. We must understand the concept of the, of, of being of the, of the Lord using us as in a deliverance stage. We're delivering. There are some people who don't believe in it, and I and listen. I have to ask the Holy Spirit to open your eyes. I am not here to argue with you about your belief in that area. All I do know is that there's still demons out here. There's still there's a there's more demons than you think that are out here out here now, and we must be about the Father's business. Not just building churches, because I build churches also. Don't get me wrong. I have two of them right now. Africa and Pakistan is listening to me right now. So it's not the question of uh, uh, not building churches. But it's the question of when you build churches, are you casting on demons? Are you, are you prophesying to the people of God? Are we, doing the, are we, are we mimicking Jesus' ministry, or are we just, do, just doing our own thing? So God wants us to start understanding it is, it's any kind. It must be done by the, by, by the deliverer. To understand how to fast and pray. Because at the end of it all, we don't want to go back and say, God, how come I didn't? I, how, how come this one couldn't come out? And He's gonna rebuke us as He's doing right now. He's rebuking us because we're not fasting and praying the way we should. We're not studying the Word of God as we should. And that's why we don't understand the power that's in, within us. So I just pray that something was said today that bless your soul because it sure did bless me. And I ask the Holy Spirit to open our eyes. Holy Spirit, we ask you right now in the name of Jesus Christ that you shall, Lord God, change our mindset. 
in order for us, oh God, to, to do the, the impossible according to what man thinks is impossible. But with, with you, all things are possible. Holy Spirit, we ask you, Holy Spirit, right now that you shall, oh my, give us a hunger and thirst, oh God, to seek the Lord Jesus Christ. Seek your face, oh Lord, we seek your face. Early in the morning, we seek your face. And we thank you, Holy Spirit, that, Lord God, at this next level, it shall be a level of greatness because we have done what we were supposed to do, to fast and to pray, to seek your face, to honor your word more and more, and to understand the dynamics of your blood, the dynamics, oh God, of your kingdom, because your kingdom is, is, is fighting, and we need to be part of the army of God indeed. Lord, we thank you for hearing us, but most importantly, we thank you for answering our prayer. We give you praise, we give you honor, we give you glory. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. I leave you with these encouraging words, saints of God. Get back to basics. Get back to fasting, to seeking God between the third and the fourth watch. And watch God do the great, great thing through us as we continue on this walk that we call life Christianity. Until next time, may the Lord bless thee and keep thee. May the Lord's face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. May the Lord that his countenance before thee and grant thee peace in your home, on your job, in your marriage, in your mindset, in your heart, in your soul. Amen. Until the Lord calls you home, I say shalom to you and yours. God bless. This is Wuwak International Ministries, and I am the founder. Apostle Hubert Rejoice.